Hi guys, this is Milo. Today we are going to transform our terminal from this to this. As software engineers, we use Terminal all the time. The Terminal version that comes as default with macOS is not offering many features. Today, we are going to install iTerm2 with Zcell and oh my ZSH framework, configure it with an amazing theme, and we will also install some additional plugins such as Autocomplete. So let's start the process and I will explain what each component does while we are transforming our terminal into an amazing one. Before we start, all the commands that you will need are in my GitHub page, which is in the description below. Some of the commands are quite complicated, so I will advise to copy paste them as I do. The first thing we need to do is install Homebrew, which is the most popular package manager for OS X and extremely useful to have it installed in your system and let it manage your packages. So let's open Safari and go to brew.sh and I will copy this command over here. and fire up terminal and paste that command in. And I will let it install. I will add my password. It will also download and install the command line tools for Xcode. And once done, we need to restart the terminal. And to check if Homebrew is installed correctly, we can type brew minus V, and we will see the version over here. So the next step is to install iTerm2. iTerm2 is a replacement for Terminal. It has amazing features such as split panes. If you want to divide an existing session horizontally or vertically, it's allowing you to bring the Terminal on the front with a hotkey, a powerful search which supporting even regex expressions, paste history, and much more. To install iTerm, let's use Homebrew, and we need to type brew cask install iterm2. And when that's done, let's close the terminal again. And for the first time, let's open iterm. And for iterm to work, it will need full disk access. So let's grant that. And we need to go over to privacy, full disk access, unlock, hit the plus, go to applications. Select iTerm and quit iTerm. And then we also need to grant access to accessibility. So I will just check this checkbox here. And now we are ready to open iTerm again. I will set the fonts quickly to something larger so we can work. And here we are. So let's try some of the iTerm features. First, let's configure a hotkey to call iTerm anytime. So go to iTerm, Preferences, Keys, and enable So Hide All Windows with a system wide hotkey. And the default here is Option Space, but I use it for Sherlock. So in my case, I will set Alt, Shift, and Z for ZSH. And let's close preferences and also close terminal. And let's try now to call it by hitting Command Shift Z. And here it is. Awesome. Let's see some other features like splitting the terminal into multiple windows. You can hit Command D to divide an existing session vertically or Command Shift D to divide it horizontally. With Command Option and the arrow keys, you can navigate the windows. With Command Shift Ender, you can maximize it. And by hitting Command Shift Ender again, you can minimize it. Now let's enable word jumps. To enable this, go to Preferences again, Profiles, Keys, and select Natural Text Editing. OK. And now let's try this feature. So I will type three words here. And we can use option and the arrow keys to jump between words. Or if we want to delete a word, we can hit option and backspace. 
which is awesome. So let's try now the find feature. So I will first send it into some directories. And then you can start typing a command and then hitting command and semicolon to open the search. And here is the command history. Those are really cool features I use in item 2, but we are far from finished. So let's now install Zshell. And Zshell or ZSH is a Unix shell built on top of Bash, which is the default shell for macOS. ZSH offers many features for beginners and expert CLI users, such as auto completion for file paths. First, let's check what shell we are using. And we can do that by typing echo dollar sign shell. And you can see here that we use bash. So let's now install ZSH by typing brew install ZSH. And now that it's installed, let's check if it's installed correctly by typing ZSH minus minus version. And you can see here we installed ZShell version 571. And now we need to set the default item shell to ZSH. And to do that, we can type chsh-s bin gsh, and I will enter my password, and then I will restart item. And to confirm that everything is correct, let's type again echo dollar sign cell. And now we are using gshell. Now it's time to install oh my gsh, which is an open source community driven framework which supports over 200 plugins and 100. 40 themes. And the command to install all my ZSH is quite complicated, so I will suggest to go in my GitHub page and find the command in here, which is right here. And let's copy that and paste that over here. Also, we need to download Power Level 9K. And again, I will go in my GitHub page, copy this command over here, copy it and paste. And when the installation is done, we will need to edit the zshrc file and I will use vim. zshrc. It's in the home directory dot zshrc. And I will head over here in zsh theme and I will change the default theme to power level 9k. I will exit insert mode and save my file. And now to update the changes, I will need to run the following command source.zshrc. If you see now that we have some fonts missing over here, and that's the next step, we will need to install a font called Source Code Pro. And I will have a link again in my GitHub page. So head over here and download this font. And to install it, we need to double click it. It will open in Font Book and then just click Install Font. Now, to configure the font in the terminal, let's go to Item, Preferences, Profiles, Text, Change Font, and I will select the Source Pro font from the list here. And that will be it. If you check now, the fonts are not missing anymore. Since we are here, let's change the color theme to Solarize Dark. So head to Colors, and the color presets, let's select Solarize Dark. And one change I like to do is to set the bright color to something brighter. And that will help us later with other suggestions. Otherwise, they may not show up. So it's already looking beautiful, but we need to do more. So let's start by actually installing other suggestions. I will head again to my GitHub page. And I will copy this command over here. And paste. And then we need to add the plugin into the zshrc file. So again, vim com folder dot zshrc. And we need to head over to plugins, which is over here. And we will need to add a space here and then zsh auto suggestions. And I will save my file again. And let's do again a source zshrc. And auto suggestions are displaying with shaded color what the previous command was. And let's demonstrate that. So see over here. That's awesome, isn't it? And if you press the arrow key, it auto completes that command. Next on the list is syntax highlighting. And to install syntax highlighting, we need to type brew install zsh syntax high 
lighting. And the installation of this plugin is a bit different. So first, let's go again to the ZSH RC file and then head over to my GitHub page and uh, copy this line over here. And let's head to the end of the file and paste the line down here. And then make sure you save again and source ZSH RC again. And syntax highlighting is awesome. So for example, if you type echo dot dollar, echo dollar, hello world, you can see that it color codes everything. It's super nice. And something else I need to demonstrate is actually if you try now to do a CD and you press tab once, you get a list of the directories. And then if you hit tab twice, you can go down and select the directory you want, which it's another awesome feature of GSH. So the last thing I need to do is actually get rid of that long username at hostname. And to do that, I will head to my GSHRC file again. And somewhere in that file, I will need to paste the following line. And I will put it right below the GSH theme. Here we need to type default user equals and be careful with that because that's a backtick character and inside here we need to type who am i and again another backtick character okay let's save the file now and source again gshrc file and here it is i now have a much shorter prompt there some other cool features of the plugins we have installed and also iterm with gsh and uh, oh my gsh it's actually you have a lot of shortcuts. So to see those shortcuts, we can type alias and pipe grab git. And those, for example, are the git shortcuts. If you want to do a git stash clear, you can type gstc and that's it. It will do it. Some other shortcuts that are quite cool are alias grab cd. For example, you can go one, two, three levels back. And if I do two levels back, oh, there are not two levels. One level back, I will head again to the home directory just by typing one or two or three or more. Seriously, ZSH is so powerful that I will need an hour to go through all those features. But feel free to read the documentation for iTerm, ZSH, and Know My ZSH to explore the full potential of those. And that's all. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. So please don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.